My name is Jackie Lutz and I'm an alcoholic. I've had 40 years of experience with alcoholism and drug addiction. I've seen it from every perspective. I've been the child of, the girlfriend of, the mother of, and I've been the main man on deck. I've learned that no matter what position you stand in it, it's a painful ordeal. The first six years of my life saw violent alcoholism on the part of my father. He abused my mother on a daily basis. I remember finding her on the kitchen floor and thinking she was dead. She left my dad when I was six years old and I never saw him again until I was 19, at which time he was a good changed family man who gave me my two sisters, Kristen and Lindsay, my stepmother and my nephew who I adore. Because he changed, I was able to forgive him. Unfortunately, not long after we were reunited, he died at the age of 47 of cancer. On his deathbed, he told me of the years he agonized over not doing the things with me that he did with my sisters. And he said it was not my mother's fault that he wasn't there. Simply put, when you treat someone bad, that's what they do, they leave. It was then that I realized he suffered too. Sometimes it is the most wounded among us that put the most pain. My time with him was short, but he left me with the faith that people can change. My childhood was not a bad one. I got moved around a lot and suffered some major abandonment issues, although I was always loved. Through my 20s into my mid-30s, I drank on rare occasions. I got pregnant with my son Anthony at age 20. And from then on, I was a single mom whose life focused on working and being a mother. I was in three long-term relationships that closely patterned the relationship with my father in that they were all marked with alcoholism and or drug addiction and unpredictability. My son's father, who I was with for six years, has been incarcerated most of my son's life and still continues to be. I am now 40 years old. I began abusing alcohol at the age of 35, around 35, although I do believe I've been an alcoholic my whole life. Um, when I was five, my dad let me sip on, sip on his beer with it if I went and got it from the refrigerator, and I remember liking it. When I was nine years old, I attended Catholic school. At the time, they still served wine at communion. I used to take the biggest gulp of the blood of Christ and catch a buzz through the rest of Mass. I've lived with the pain of watching my son in his own addiction. He's overdosed three times on pills. I've sat in the ICU and had the doctors tell me they didn't know if he would make it. I drained myself financially, physically, and emotionally thinking I was going to control him when I was trying to fight my own addiction at the same time, only to find out he has his own higher power and it wasn't me. I had to let him find his own way and realize I can only help him by helping myself. Over the past five years, I've gone on and off the wagon. I get 18 months together, six months together a year, then I get it in my head I can do it just once. I think I'm being sneaky going to the liquor store. You know, I get the bottle home, no one's going to know. Until the vodka's in my body and then the whole neighborhood knows. Reason being is that I'm known for not doing what I'm told. I've operated my recovery like it's a game of Monopoly. I go around the board a few times, get properties together, cash, I'm doing great. Then I get to go back to jail card, don't pass go. Once again, I'm back at square one. In five years' time, I've gotten two DWIs. I've been to rehab several times. I've spent 36 days in jail. My mother had to receive a collect call from me on Christmas Day. I've been maced, I've done the Sheriff's Labor Assistance Program, 340 hours community service, paid thousands in fines. I've been set hospitalized several times because of alcohol poisoning. Once I start to drink because of my extreme tolerance, I can't stop because I can't handle the brutal withdrawal. I've had seizures, I've been into heart failure, and I'm now a borderline diabetic. I would like to say I lost so much, but in reality I gave it away because I chose to continue to drink. Real fast, I went from being on top of the world and having it all to having nothing. I believe the experiences of my childhood, relationships, genetic predisposition, and my refusal to believe I could not control my drinking have all contributed to my alcoholism. The reason I agreed to share my story is because I've seen so many underestimate alcohol. They think it's no big deal because it's legal. I've seen many people addicted to drugs fool themselves into thinking that alcohol is safe. Um, Many times this has led either to them substituting their drug in turn for alcohol abuse or alcohol has lowered their inhibitions and led them to eventual relapse on their drug and so the nightmare begins for them once again. Alcohol is no joke. Its withdrawal is brutal and deadly and affects every organ in the body. I don't spend, no t I don't spend time feeling sorry for myself because self-pity keeps me drunk. 
I don't spend time worrying if people are talking about me because I'm not trying to save my face, I'm trying to save my ass. I no longer carry resentments because resentments are like a cup of poison poured for someone else that you drank. Today I live in New York. I have a tight network of friends and a pro very tight network of friends in the program that I use constantly. The program that's based on basic Christian belief that one heals their own wounds by helping others. I do what I'm told even when I don't want to. It seems that the rules actually do apply to me. I maintain a close relationship with my 19 year old son. Thursday, I completed three years of PTI with no violations. I've gotten many of my legal consequences satisfied now. I'm, so, I'm somewhat grateful for these consequences because they've saved my life. I face them head on. I'm grateful for the many, many friends who've stuck with me through the worst of it. And I'm grateful for the ones who told me to screw off because they're the ones who helped me see what I was doing was unacceptable. I'm not going to stand here and act like it's been a year since my last drink because it hasn't. I don't count days and weeks. I just worry about the day that I'm in. I get up every day, I hit the ground running, and I do my best. I always keep it moving and never give up because I just am not going down like this. In closing, I'd like to say rest in peace to Joey, TJ, David, Nick, Julie, Kevin, Mike, Billy, Dee, Maggie, Karen, Richie, Jimmy, John, Happ, and Thomas. Thank you for listening, and God bless.